Hi everyone, this is a pillow tutorial, small pillow as you can see. Um, we will be using the fishing line, the pins, these are my thimbles for when I hand sew the cording on. This is specifically, the hot glue gun is specifically for when we do the cording. I do not use hot glue anywhere on this piece. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, this has already been prepped. I already have it pinned together. Here's our opening at the top. This is where we will leave the gap for the cording. And this material has already had the fusible interfacing put on uh, so that when we go to sew the cording on, it doesn't rip through the material and it helps stabilize it for when we stuff it. So here we go. I'm gonna change the camera over to be in front and we must use a sewing machine on this part. I don't hand sew my pillows. Here we go, let me pause it. So my machine is can be a little bit noisy um, because it sounds like a bit of a thrasher of the golden era. So uh, if you want to uh, fast forward or mute it, uh, the only stops I will be making is to jump over the hole for the uh, cording spot. But I will say this before I start, I do not if you see my needle, if you can see it, okay, it's not really easy to see. I do not cut in any stitches. I stitch right on the edge and I've never had a problem with it. So um, here we go. If you want to mute it or fast forward it, this might be the time you want to do it. I can get her to go. Hold on. <laughs> I always do the back stitch to lock down. It's a little different trying to have a camera right in my line of sight. Sorry if the camera is bouncing from the machine. One more stitch. Okay, so here we are. I apologize. You might hear me not be very happy camper. I left my nippy scissors at home and it's a very important part of doing a pillow, at least for me. Not everybody does it this way. 
Um, and you might think, oh, you know, that's, oh, whew, geez, I thought I ran out of bobbin or something because my thread had gotten sewn up in. Okay, so all my pins are out. Get all of this out of the way to try this. So here's my opening, right? Well, along the top, when I cut this off, I leave a wider swath of waste canvas <clears throat> at the hole. And then I leave about a half an inch the rest of the way around. Now I'm using a plaid. This is what they chose. Unfortunately, it doesn't always come out looking square on the back because the material might shift when I put the fusible interfacing on it. And <clears throat> so then on the back, it doesn't always look as square as it actually is. So, then seeing where the hole starts, okay, I'm going to come down, nip there, and come across that half inch. Oh, this is going to make me crazy not having the right scissors, but I'll try not to get too ugly about it. All right, and here is our other side. And I just like a little extra at the top for when I have to sew it all together. And it's not as much about the waste canvas as it is about the piece of material that I have to turn inside. So I can cut this down some. Okay. So we do the corners. And for me, this is key. You know how you kind of get these little uh, bunchy looking things when you stuff a needle point pillow it is because this long piece of canvas uh, needs darts in the edge so that it can kind of go in and out along with the stuffing so my, I personally find that it does help with that now, I'm going to tell you right now, you're probably going to want to fast forward in a second. Here's my hole here. I put a dart on either side, like that. So that hole is, has, if you put a dart in the middle of where this gap is, okay, um, what can happen is it will fray, you know, like right up to the edge and you, you really want a nice piece of weight there because as you can tell as I'm doing this, if I was to really continue to manipulate and play with this, this is going to start to break apart. So we don't want to, we want a nice straight piece of waste canvas right across there, as well as on this side, because if you have a dart in the middle of it, which if you look at it, I'm a little off center there, um, then the material could potentially fray and pull as you're trying to hand, you know, get that cording in there. And so that little area shut enough to keep that caught up in. Okay, go ahead, fast forward, because I'm just going to sit here and nip and really not give out any pertinent information. 
and I'll do hand signs to tell you when to stop. those of you who didn't fast forward, I'd sing you a song, but I can't really carry a tune a cappella. Oh, I miss my nippy scissors. These are starting to hurt my hand. Now, we're going to fold our waste canvas. I personally find when turning it out and that when I stuff it and this kind of has this memory to come in, okay? just one of the little things I like to do. Sometimes it's all about the little things that we do. Okay, so now we're going to turn it out. Get all the schniblets off of me. Oh wow, this is really out of focus. Hold on please. Okay, sorry about that. I had the uh, autofocus on. So, I forgot to show a very important tool of mine. My crusty butter knife that I use to help me turn things right side out. So, it looks crusty because that's a bit of metal epoxy on the end that would not come off after I was using it for something else. Okay, so... I start at one corner, push it out, push out one side, push out the next side, very gently. I try not to be too intrusive when turning things out because I don't want to completely destroy the blocking aspect that we did and it's very easy to do all right so I'm what I'm doing inside is I am putting my knife between the waist canvas and the stitching so that I can run right up the edge of that of the needlepoint canvas versus the other. Okay, so here we are. You see my ends are, you know, these little kind of roundy looking things. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. Just pushing on the back of the needlepoint with my butter knife, which it is a very blunt edge butter knife. It's kind of this cheap. Right. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of rolling this so that there's a nice tight edge there. Okay, that looks good. Let's get this last corner out. I'm putting this butter knife in at the corner between the waist canvas and the stitching. And you can see that as I pull it, it's pulling that canvas nice and straight. When you go in a stitch, what happens is it makes for a thicker seam. Now, I think we did okay. I'm going to turn this under now. All right. Okay. Okay. This is a big trick. This is a uh, doll needle, D-O-L-L, -L, um, specifically so that you can like sew eyes through a long, or an upholstery needle, but this one specifically said doll on it. I am inserting this into the stitches at the corner, and I kind of, I don't go, I go in through the edge, the hole, not through the stitch piece because I don't want to pull I believe this is uh, silk and ivory I don't want to pull the thread I just want to insert it between and I can kind of pull that corner so it's much squarer okay now this one is has been pushed out by the butter knife a little too far and made a roundy spot there I'm going to do the same thing here so now it pulls those corner stitches and yes you can see my the waist canvas right there cording's going to cover it up but we have this very much nicer squared corner and i think we can get that one out just a tiny bit better okay i gotta plug my iron in i wasn't planning on doing this but Sometimes silk and ivory. Here is another little, we're going to do a reset on our um, blocking. And you might want to do it, you might not want to do it, but if you, when you write the piece, if you feel that it just has shifted a little. So this, um, if you watch the blocking video, it's the same piece. And what happens is uh, the silk and ivory is very soft. So it doesn't have a lot of structure to it. It doesn't add to the body as much as, say, this Krynik, which is plastic base. So it holds very tightly together. And so I'm going to kind of come in here and just a little bit more there. And I don't. I don't want to do this corner too much because, as you can tell, this, um, it, especially in pillows, when you write them, you're going to notice that, uh, I'm guessing it's because of the bias of the weave, that I think it's the left and the right, they shift, like, out. So you'll get one corner that's really pointy here and like pointy here, but these kind of stay relatively squared and it's just all because of how it's woven together. And so what I'm going to do is get my steam to come out. I'm going to give it a I'm not putting it down on the needle point. I am simply giving it a little steam up above, okay? Put this to the side. Now, whether or not, and I'm pulling as if, okay, because I'm trying to, and I'm blowing lightly with cool air from my breath. And sometimes it works better than others. 
let's hope. Yeah. Okay, we've got that to kind of reset a little bit. Okay, we're going to let it sit there and cool for a second, and I'm going to plug my iron again. Okay, and I'm ill prepared because I didn't grab my fluff. Hold on. I definitely did not prepare enough for this video. I apologize. So, we also need this. It is Royal Silk Luxury Down Alternative. I use this on all of my pillows because it doesn't stuff overly hard. Now, there is dry polyester fill, which I use for tiny pieces uh, that need to be more sculptural. And then there is um, standard polyfill. Okay, see how foofy this is. So we want to take little clumps and we're going to... So he, here's a big, big key aspect of doing a pillow. Okay, when you stuff a pillow, needlepoint up. This makes sure that you if you do it like this, it's going to expand, 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 and it's going to kind of look like this explosion out the back, and the front will look too overstuffed and potentially kind of create these darts along the edge that just aren't pretty. So to prevent overstuffing, look, we put it, and we start in the corners just like any other piece and as I put this in even though it's nice and soft and you know really doesn't pack hard at all um, I am shoving it into the corners very firmly and I do that all the way along as I stuff okay and if you notice I'm keeping my hand here and I'm stuffing against and, and to really get into my corners, I'm going to utilize Mr. Butterknife. I should put a little face on him. He is one of my favorite tools. Okay, get some more fluff. I'm just going to have this semi-empty bag in a Put it all out here because I can never tell how much a piece is going to take. As I said, this particular fiber choice lends it to be a much softer kind of pillow. I mean, the silk and ivory that it was stitched with. Okay, and I'm stuck. And as I'm inserting this in, I'm kind of pushing like this with my fingers so that it doesn't get all balled up. And I wouldn't normally choose a shirt like this that gets fluff all over it, but I have very severe <laughs> poison ivy. And um, I think I don't want to. Not only have you see the loveliness it is, but get calamine lotion all over somebody's lovely needlepoint. All right. And you just keep stuffing. As you start to come to the top, I take my fingers in and I'm pushing that along the edge. So you have, I'm pushing it down like this so that it really fills that side, okay? I'm gonna put some up in the corner now. Again, you can see how this wants to go really pointy, so be careful of that. You don't have to overstuff it, you just need to make sure that it's got plenty in there, and I'm gonna try to maintain this. Now I'm just going to be grabbing from here because this is so big. 
So full this bag. I know. Stuffing is so exciting. Then once I have my corner set, I feel like my sides are nice and full. I come in. It's a little balled up. And that was from me taking some stuffing out. pillow I had a little too much in. You don't you want to try to make sure it's as fluffy when you put it in because you'll compact it when you go. Now when it comes to the top seam you're gonna question why I do this I'm sure but I have found that if I do not want this to you have to overstuff it at the top. Okay, and because what happens is if you don't, this is going to come down and it might dent here because as people sit against it or, you know, handle it, grab onto it, needs a little bit of help at the top and the center and it'll eventually work itself down. You don't really see it once you sew it, it is hard to get the seam to shut sometimes. Okay, now, I don't know if you can see this. So here we are. Oof, it's just flowing out of there. Okay, so now you're going to see me grabbing pins and putting them back because a lot of times my pins have glue on them. So we start. here. Okay. I'm going to go like this. And on the material side, grab in and pin it. Okay. And you work from one side to the other side. And you keep just pushing it in. Because if you try to well, I haven't had much luck being able to, I didn't get it in far enough. There we go. I don't want that pin to pop back out as I'm coming across. Sorry if the air conditioner is noisy. First day of summer. Well, heat on Cape Cod. All right. I hope you can see. It's kind of tough because it's. Oof! I have. S doesn't matter how many times I clean these silly pins. All right, I'm gonna move my light a little so it's more on this side, so you can maybe see a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. You should be able to see that as we I'm pulling this shut, we're gonna have a nice even seam. Wow, I can't believe how many clean pins are in here. I must have put done the goo gone cleaning treatment on them not too long ago and didn't realize it. Yeah, I have a little sponge in a jar that I put a bunch of goo gone on and then I take the pin and I <laughs> put it in and out and try to get all of my nasty glue off of it. Okay so here we go. All right and this is our width of our pillow. 
we'll look at it from this end because that top side makes it look funky. But see, it's not overly stuffed. If you want to overstuff it, that's fine. I just find that it lays, you know, it helps keep the structure of the shape of the pillow and see it stops the, the dents on the sides. When you start filling it too much, you can start to see these funny dents. Now, the I do not do self well, I apologize. Um, I don't like it, Never un, have never been able to do it. it requires some blind sewing that I just don't do. Okay, I gotta move this light now because it's like in my face. Let's see if we can get this. Pull this back a little because I tend to keep this Oops, schnibblets all over me. Alright, so now, oh yeah, actually I do use my thread, my hot glue gun at this point because I always give a little anchor of hot glue on the end of my thread. And it's time to put my double cheaters on. I put these on over my glasses so that I have really up close and can see this thread, uh, fishing line. The invisible thread is extremely difficult to use. It is way too fine and how they roll it onto the spool. Um, it, this has a memory. It wants to go round. Okay, so I cut that off. I put this in to anchor my... Okay, now... This is my thumb gripper. This is a, uh, do I have a box going here? Yeah. This is a Next Care Band Aid. Specifically, the waterproof. They used to be called the tattoo band aids for little kids and used to have little Disney princesses all over them. And I put a little piece of leather on the inside. And that usually holds pretty beautifully. Okay. Okay. And what did I just do with that round curved needle? I guess it's this one. Okay. Now we're going to do the top seam. And I always have to remember when I start. So what I do is, you can see my waist canvas pulled up a little there, so I am putting it back down, pushing it in with my needle. And I am catching the inside of the needle point canvas and coming up back here. And when I do, seams and this is included in because I have done them I just don't like to do the self well you do the same thing when you're doing a, a binding stitch I guess that's what it's called um, with the self well okay you are bringing it up see it's on it's actually coming out of the needle point part and we're going to grab a bit of the material. Okay. We come, try to go straight into the next needle point. And I'm coming through. See the shiny there? Can you see it? It's hard. I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch the light with it. There you go. Okay and I'm grabbing the material and coming up just like n n not even a quarter of an inch away okay so we are grabbing a section of material Ooh, there's my little glue dot let's put you back down in okay I'm gonna take the first pin out and I hold it together with my fingers and 
try to make sure it continues. Let's pull our stitch line up there. Hold on. Let's see if I can get a little better light here. And I'm going to get down a little closer here. Okay, I gotta go back up. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna try to stay within this. Boy, my hands look really dry. Jeez. What the camera does. Okay. Coming up. Now we're just going to chug along the top. Make sure I'm getting in that first row. All right. Definitely going to want to fast forward through this. I'm going to stop talking. Try to be very mindful to keep these stitches short.
Okay, so we're knotting it off multiple times. Okay, at this point, I take my needle, put it on the back side of my knot, I pull it up through like this. And I cut it off, okay? And now I massage this up and see how smooth that is? But here's a big thing, okay? Let's see. Hold on. All right, so here we have our pillow right and you can see that it doesn't seem it seems a little fatter up here this is uh, another moment for the doll needle so you slide your needle in here and you pull your fluff up okay and then you push your stitches back together and you pull it up Okay, and then you push your back together. And right in the center of your, again. And what it does is it pulls all of this stuffing up in the back and we push it, our stitches back together, kind of roll them and you will not see any of those points where you did that. You can also just massage it and this stuffing is so fluffy that it just pushes right back up again okay all right over handling of silk and ivory tends to lead to fluffiness all right take these off and the next step is cording um, one other trick I'd like to show you is to take your, see the waist canvas there? See how it's like this? Oh, hold on. Okay, so this, when I stuffed this, the um, waist canvas went towards the back. I want to manipulate my stuffing from behind that the best that I can so that that is actually right up against the needlepoint canvas okay and the reasoning for that is is when I put my cording in I put it towards the the hard ends to the front because I don't want to feel them on the back side this has enough of a buffer but if you put the hard bits right on this side with no fluff between them um, you can really feel them and I, I use some hot glue on mine uh, ends and it, it just it's not attractive and it's it's you're not hiding your mechanics of how you do things um, everything should be hidden people shouldn't be able to see the mechanics when you're done so I'm going to do a supplemental little quick video while I make this and I'm gonna take my needle as I'm talking to you and I'm gonna pull some fluff up into this corner a little bit more because I can feel that it shifted out of it okay that one seems okay that one's okay oh this one got a little fluff taken out of it as well just be careful when you're doing this to not tear your fabric on the back with the head of your needle. Okay, all holes are. Okay, back in a few with the cording. Okay, the cording is done. And we are going to start. Putting on the cording. 
um, this cording, uh, the fibers for this were given to me by the customer. So sometimes I do not get to choose what I use and try to get it as even as possible as far as the width of it, but it's not always possible. So, all right. So I put this, typically when I sew anything, ornament, anything, I put the needle point to the left, the fabric to the right. No idea other than it's just how I do it. Oh, gotta put my other glasses on here so I can see the close stitching. And so I put it in like this and I bring it up through the needle point. Now you're gonna see as I go around, I'm kind of uh, twisting so that the angle of this cording, I can slide right between it, okay? You cannot go too far because if you do, you will definitely see a difference. Okay, I gotta let that dangle off so that it sort of be a little bit easier to twist as I go. Um, if you get cording too thick on small pieces, it can't make the corners well and it doesn't hug down tight um to the fabric okay i gotta move my camera back a little sorry you can see all of the junk on my floor now okay we're coming around the corner All right, now you may want to, okay, hmm. gotta make sure you can still, still you, have you in camera shot. Okay. I tend to Pull pretty tight on my thread as I'm coming around. And even if I make the fabric buckle a little, it'll ease up as I go along because you just can't hold it tight enough all the way around. It will kind of relax. Bounce back a little. Uh, this is not gluing cording on a pillow is not applicable. Doesn't work. People handle it. It's soft. Um. I'm sorry, but I don't, you know, they're your pieces and I, I don't, uh, you can glue, you can do whatever you want normally, but uh, to me, this is, uh, yeah, no. This is something you just have to do. Okay, see how long it is there? And how this is a little bit tighter. I keep twisting this cord as I go around, which then makes it a little tighter again. Makes all of those the same distance. 
Uh, because if I let go of this cord, and actually when you look at how large the spacing is, it's just not as tight as the stuff that I went around the corner on. And it's only like a half of a twist. I do the same thing on ornaments as I'm going around. I know there are some people that pin their cording as they go around. I find that I can't do that because I don't just generically lay it down. I tend to twist as I go. Especially if I can't get, if I'm like in between, really in between, and it's not gonna sew down nicely. Okay. Now I want to make sure that I'm not buckling this too much, making ripples in the material on the back. Okay. Got to make sure to do small stitches around the corners. Sure you're fast forwarding by now. pretty bright out there and it is making it almost a little I think my navy all my navy here is kind of making it too bright the auto settings on my camera Alright, going across the top, you have to be careful of the hand sewn areas because this part is hand sewn and can tend to buckle the fabric. Just cause a little weird waviness. Ugh, my I'm a little sweaty. This thing's rolling on me. Sorry about that. yellow schmutz there. Kind of freaked me out.
sorry, didn't mean to hit the camera there. Scoot you back a little. I'm going to not the soft here.
Amen. That caught a piece of the silk and ivory and didn't lay right. Let's try that again. Okay, sorry about the big hand in the camera. Alright, so I'm going to knot this off. Okay, now. Okay, so. piece of my fishing line. I lay this like this. I see that the hole is there. I want to be able to tuck it up in further. Now I want to be able to have enough here. See that's going to lay right. The black is going to go into the yellow of that. But I'm going to want to have, be able to twist it just a tiny bit when I tuck it. So I want it that's way too far down, to be like there. Okay. out for a second. Got to grab my flat paddled pliers because I'm going to take the glue I the reason I do this is because sometimes that lovely as I'm pushing this in that lovely little knot and piece of fishing line likes to come off and then it unravels and it is bad and makes me very angry obviously would you, would you push all this down I do this to save my fingers because they're not made of asbestos they will burn And I round this off, snip that off, get all that yuck off my table. Okay, so here is that. And I go like so. And on the back side, I push this. in okay and I push it towards the front come on oh why is it being difficult because it can all right and see how those meet right up I'm gonna push this back one under the front one the black cry neck Okay, and that's pretty good. I'm 
Okay. Uh, put my little pad back on and my grippy because if my hands get sweaty, I can't do it. It is not always easy to get this to behave. Okay, so I'm going to go here. And this, I do not try to curve my needle back around. I literally almost use it like a straight needle. Come like this. Come back in there. Try to slide it between the materials and bring it up there. I push this black down and I go over the one black on the back side and up through here. I'm, I have to be so careful of this silk and ivory because it's so poofy. It doesn't behave the same way. Now there's a couple tricks coming up here. Bring this. Come back. Grabbing the needlepoint canvas. See? Like this. Then I'm going to kind of do what I did on the top seam and grab the material like this. Come back there. I'm still on only on the back side of the material. See, and it cinches that right down against the cord, and your pocket is closed. Now we still have some tugging and kind of manipulating to do. I hope this is not too blurry. I had to switch it off of autofocus because it wasn't refocusing. Okay, oop. Okay, now I know you can see that's bulgy, that's not. We have another doll needle moment coming up. Pull up through there. And I'm pulling down here. I'm trying to cinch that little piece down. Okay, while this is hanging, we're going to take this and we have to push this yellow kind of down inside more. If it'll do it. Please, please, please. There. Okay, and we're going to slide this, Let's see if I can do it like this, nope, I can't, I keep catching it, Let's see if I can slide it, I'm separating it, I'm trying to pull this back a little, just that loop there, okay? I'm going to do the same thing over here so that it looks smaller again. Okay, see it takes the bulbiness off of it. needle again. Alright. And 
I'm going to pull that is in the fabric right there. I'm going to slide my needle under here. Bring it back up over here. And pull try to get all that laying straight as possible. Now I'm just going to grab hold of a little fabric, knot it off. it again. Okay. Alright. Alright. Now, next, that grippy has oh, too much too many little spotty things on it. I like to take, make sure that I pull my seams to help straighten any little pull marks. Okay. And you, not too bad. It's difficult. All right, so I think that turned out pretty well. Here's the back. Did okay with the checkerboard, not too off kilter. And I hope that helped you guys with how to do little pillows. And Okay, I'm just futzing now. All right, good luck.